Oh, there you go. Wow. These are the red packs. These are the Adabapo red packs. I'm a fish nerd. A fish nerd. A fish nerd. A fish nerd. This is a shipment. This is South American. This is a shipment of a walk out South American fish. Uh, these are some uh, geophagus tournaments. These are the art theaters out of South America. These ones that have a lot of color on them. You know, all the red streaks through the body, through the tail, the real long trailers. Real mild, sick one out of, out of South America. Green Phantom Plicas. Okay, here's some silver arowanas, the uh, big predator fish out of South America. Now, what, is it the Asians that are illegal? The Asian ones are considered to be an endangered species, so they are illegal to own in the United States. People still smuggle them in. The price is prohibitive, two, three hundred, two or three thousand dollars. <throat> the big concern is they're not really an endangered species. They are, uh, most of what you see that are available are captured bread. They, they are chipped, like you chip your dog, they'll chip the fish. But since they are considered to be an endangered species, the price goes up. And that's what the people who breed them want. So all the ones that you see at these big shows like in China and stuff, are those all Asians or are those? If it, has, if it has color, it is. Anything colored is Asian? Yeah, anything that's red, green, gold ones, those are all the Asian ones. They're super cool. Yeah. But uh, they're just super expensive, but whatever parts of my life can go knock at your door, take your fish, throw you in jail. <laughs> These are the uh, freshwater puppers out of South America. Real mild, they do better in groups. Um, really cool, they, they like to chew on snails, they almost need to chew on snails to keep their beak down. Uh, they are uh, uh, just a super cool fish. Um, they just are, they're not your normal puffer, they're much milder. Anything, anything with the shell content will work for them to chew on. We also have the uh, South American uh, silver tip, silver silver tip catfish. I call them bala catfish. Some people call them uh, Colombian blackfin sharks. They are catfish. They have whiskers. But the nice thing about these, well, nice thing, problem with whatever. They are brackish water. The bigger they get, the more salt they like. They do get big. They'll get well over a foot, probably two feet long. More of the fancy plecos, the gold nuggets, or the, or the yellow dots. And there's several different strains of them in there. Some of them have big spots, some of them have, have smaller spots. I think all they do is sort them. Whenever you see them, um, you'll see three or four different types on, on a list. I think you're just all just sorting them and, and uh, putting them in there. They are they are several different L numbers that you'll see under the gold nugget. Under the gold nugget name, but I think somebody's just sorting them, and they may be from different locations. But I think there's so much variability in each in each location type that you see a lot of sorting them, sorting going on. The other South American, Central American, depending who you talk to, fish. These are the green terrors. These ones have a lot all the 
pretty green on them. Some of them will have white trim, some of them will have yellow trim on them. What do you mean depending on who you talk to? Um, there's two different strains of green terrors. One comes from South America and one comes from Central America. Supposedly the South American one is much milder than the Central American one. But I have never had... A queen is, should be a South American fish, but there's so much... You never know what how, how fish have been moved around or people play games with you. The natives don't want to tell you where they got a fish because that is their personal stash of fish. If they tell you where they get it from, somebody else can go get it. Uh, it's more big corridors out of South America, the corridors mate, they have the bask and the bands on them. But the collecting stations, you'll see fish that you never see anywhere else. Everybody sees the albinos, but everybody wants big quarry catfish. Those don't like the small albinos. Well, the people that are doing the collecting don't care what, don't care what the L numbers are as far as the flecos go. They just they're just catching them to sell. So they all sort of look the same. These they are, get these are natives. They uh, what what will happen is somebody will go in there and say they'll show them a fish. Say, hey, can you get this fish? And they just sit there and look at them real strange. Like, why the hell you want that fish? But sure, we will get it for you. These people are subsistence. They normally catch what they normally eat what they catch. And if some stupid, crazy American is willing to give them real cash, real money for this shit, I don't care. They'll, they'll, they'll go to town on it. But uh, they, um, it, it, it's become a big business, but they, um, it's a totally different culture there. They, they literally, everything they buy, uh, sorry, everything they catch, you'll see people, you'll see people eating thousand dollar fish and not thinking anything of it. And, and, but, but they can't get hamburgers, they can't go to the McDonald's, they, have to, they, they literally have to eat what they catch or they don't eat. <clears throat> and it's just, it, I've seen pictures of a, of a lady leaving Lake Tanganyika with a stringer of huge front tusks on her, on, on her back. It's like, I, I can, <laughs> I, you eat what you get. Food to her. But see, somebody had to have told her how to get them. So those are deep water fish. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to have said, Hey, you go down real deep in the in the, in, in and they're not something that you can you would see any other time. Somebody had to have figured out how to get down there because they are an all deep water critters. The frontosas are so you had to decompress them to get them up alive. She probably didn't care about that. Still, oh, it's, it's amazing. Oh, they're though. that deep water. Oh, 100 feet, 200 oh, feet. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, Tanganyika is deep. That's where all the frontosas come from, though, all, especially all the big ones. Of any, of any size, okay, these are small ones too, because that's where that's where they are. Have they noticed any negative effects in keeping them in aquariums without that, that the normal pressure they're used to? Some of them, some of them are the. There's one or two specific locations of them, like in Pimbue. There's a lot of in Pimbue frontosis. It's one of the blue frontosis. Those guys will start floating after a while, sometimes, and they are sitting at their. Certain people will attribute that to what food you feed them, or them getting too much air in their diet. But it just those in pinpoints are the ones that are real bad, and, I, and sometimes you see them all just hovering at the top of the water, just bouncing. And that's the time you get rid of them. How in the world would you deal with a wild caught then? That's a whole different animal, then, isn't it? Um, well, wild caught. Basically, you want to be careful where you get them from. Um, I can't tell them all apart, but there are people who can. It has to do with the pattern on their on their bars, where they're from, and there's a lot of people out in the world who are who don't care what they are. They'll 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 say you either they got. They need six. We got three for here and three for here. Hey, perfect match. Um, so you really want to be careful where you where you get them from. Uh, but the 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 Zyres, the all the blue frontoses especially are so high dollar that. People, there's a lot of people who just sell wherever they got, and I can't tell them apart. But I have trouble, you know. Regular frontosas I sell fifteen, twenty dollars. The blue frontosas cost, you know, cost me, 
You know, that, that sells for a hundred dollars. So just so much more expensive. And they get it, but I don't see how you how you can tell the difference between, especially at small size. When they're bigger, they're a lot bluer. They're nice, but they're so expensive. They're prohibitively expensive. And you can order them, and that's probably the best way to do is order order them from somebody who's bringing them in. But you want to be careful with them. You want to make certain you can trust them. And the other thing about them is people want to bring them in and raise them. So you don't need one male for several females. So it's almost impossible to get females. So the people who bring them in normally, they bring them in for a reason, and they'll distribute them through the through the through their network, or whatever. But they'll want to bring in a hundred fish, and they'll keep. 10 males and 30 or 40 females for themselves and then they'll disperse the rest of the fish to the, to the area and a lot of times it's tough getting females. Okay, next fish we have there is some spot-faced pikes. These are some, another South American predator. These are one of the really cool fish, a lot of color out of South America. Um, they'll have a lot of, they're fairly, they are aggressive eaters, but they aren't necessarily nasty fish. They don't go and kill everything. Um, people, people a lot of times will confuse uh, uh, things that are meat eaters with things that are going to kill fish. How big do those pikes get full grown? Foot and a half to two <laughs> feet. Okay, these are the spot face pikes. Those are the red pikes. Look at the pattern on these guys. Those must have been the red pikes here. Those are the Arabaco red pikes. These are the spot face pikes. These are the red pikes. These are the Atabapo red pikes. That thing is beautiful. They are gorgeous. Um, they are a predator. They can be a little bit aggressive, but they're still not super nasty. Not like a red devil is. Oh, me. Do what? <coughs> Can't wait. Somebody already wants one. Oh. Wants both of them. <laughs> so, they don't go to tank. Sorry, guys. <laughs> The only other problem you have with pikes is sometimes they are ready. They, they don't eat dry food very well. You gotta, you gotta work out feeding them. I've seen some of them that are, they'll eat every, anything and everything, but I've seen other ones that, that, that just refuse to eat. So here's some more of the, these are the big royal plecos, the spotted royals. These are the big gorgeous ones. These are the ones that you never see. There's probably a foot long there. Just want to let you guys know too, um, if you haven't seen some of the previous videos, um, Texas Aquatics is a one of my local fish stores that's actually in, I think it's Haltom City. There's three cities that kind of combine, Hearst, Euless, Bedford, Haltom City. Um, I think he's actually in, you, I don't know, he's in one of them, Texas Aquatics. Um, you can check out his Facebook page. If you search for Texas Aquatics, you'll find that. Uh, but before you do that, understand he does not ship. Everything that he has is local only. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.